regarding quality 13, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth is felt, it is emotional, look like in my day-to-day -day life? Well, firstly, um, we would not try to do anything. We would understand that if the process with God is not, with regard to love, is not automatic. In other words, I do not understand God's laws automatically. Then it means that there's an emotion I have to experience that opposes my understanding. Not an intellectual understanding that I've got wrong, but rather an emotion that I've got inside of myself that's out of harmony with love or truth. If I understood that, that the wrongness, if you could call it that, is emotional and not intellectual, mm. it's not a lack of intellectual knowledge, then I, I would have a lot better understanding about this particular quality. Yeah. So in my day-to-day -day life, I wouldn't try to do everything or anything. I wouldn't be using my intellect to make decisions. I wouldn't be changing just my actions. I would instead want to work, I want to feel every feeling that I actually have on that particular subject. And when I noticed the feeling was out of harmony with love or truth, I would wish to release it from myself. And I wouldn't resist that process if I understood this quality. I would love that process. I would actually engage that process willingly. So as you know, there's not many people on the planet who yet love that process. Mm. And so they, therefore they've yet to have a soul understanding of this particular divine truth. All right, some things from your notes. Sure. Um, I think you just covered this one. I do not try to live in divine truth. Rather, I feel divine truth as emotions within my soul. Yep. I understand that if I'm trying, it is because I'm yet to actually make the soul change needed. And that's a very important understanding to get at the soul level, to understand that if you are having to try... And if you are having to change your actions, but you still have a longing in your soul to keep doing the previous thing you were doing that you know was unloving, then it means that there's yet to be a soul-based change. So, so for example, a person who's smoking decides to stop smoking. So they stop smoking, but they still feel like they'd like to have a cigarette. <laughs> that is an indication that nothing's changed at the soul level. The cause of them desiring the cigarette in their soul has not changed. It's like a person who wants to drink to get drunk all the time. If, this, if the change hasn't been made in the soul, then you'll feel drawn back into that pattern of behaviour, no matter how much of an intellectual change you've made. Mm -hmm. This is why New Year's resolutions don't work very well, yes. generally. <laughs> Most people, you know, they sit there on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, they go, oh, I want to change my life, I want to have some you know, new experiences this year that I, had, I haven't had last year. I want to be more good to myself and, I, you know, yep. and usually it's after a whole couple of weeks first of being <laughs> yeah. bad to themselves they get to this point. And, and then what they do is they go, okay, I'm going to make some resolutions. Mm -hmm. Usually by two or three days into the new year, most of those resolutions are out the window. And the reason why is that we can intellectually think our way through things as much as we want Unless there's going to be some soul-based change, no change is really going to be very easy to engage. Mm. Yeah. So unless we have a big cry on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day... And About the subject that we want to change, yeah. it's highly unlikely the next day there will be a change. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. I always see that there's an emotion within me when I'm out of harmony with divine truth. Yeah, so whenever I see, let's say in my intellectual analysis, my logical analysis, I see that God does a certain thing, but I don't do it. Or God seems to have an understanding a certain way, but I don't seem to have that particular understanding. Instead of trying to change my mind on the subject, I need to change my soul on the subject. And the only way that a soul can change is by going through an emotional experience of releasing the error to absorb the truth. I understand that. I don't avoid that. I don't think myself away from that. Mm -hmm. I don't try and intellectually reason that I should be able to avoid the pain of the error. I don't try to get away with the error. I allow myself to go through the experience. That's what I would do if I had a soul-based understanding of this quality of God's truth. Yeah. I would also choose actively to feel the emotional experience 
rather than choosing actively to avoid it. So I see a lot of people doing that. There's a choice actively to avoid it. We start discussing a truth. The emotion starts rising in the person of error. You know, the error starts coming out and they start shoving it back down <laughs> and suppressing it. Well, that's because there's no soul-based understanding of this particular divine truth, mm -hmm. that all of God's truth is going to have to be felt. You're going to have to allow the emotional experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So we, we actually want to identify and experience the emotions that are out of harmony with love. Yes. In fact, it becomes our first point of concern mm -hmm. in, our, in every aspect of life. So let's say something bad happened to us today. Let's say we had a car accident. Instead of trying to fix this accident from an intellectual perspective or fix the results of this accident from an intellectual perspective, I am going to be focused emotionally on why did this accident occur? There's got to be something in my soul that mm. caused this particular thing. If we look at it from a perspective of a disease, a lot of people catch severe, catch severe diseases like, you know, something like AIDS or or cancers, or heart disease, or, you know, that are life-threatening. And what they have a tendency to do is they have a tendency to go and change their life, but not change their emotion. Now, if you change your life, sometimes it will trigger some changes in emotion, and therefore some benefits. But a lot of the times, if you don't change something emotionally, you will continue with your cancer. Your cancer will worsen, or AIDS will worsen, or whatever it is that, that is the disease that you've got will worsen. It won't improve. Mm. It can only improve by releasing the emotional error that creates it. And while I'm focused intellectually on changing my diet, changing my day-to-day -day practices without going through any emotional experience, it's highly unlikely I will find a cure except medically. But if I go through the emotional experience, it's highly likely I will, I will be cured. Mm. But we need to understand that the fact that we've got a disease is telling us how shut down we are emotionally. So it's already telling us how resistive we are to experiencing the emotions that create the disease. Otherwise, the disease wouldn't have gotten created. So this is an indication, the fact that we have the disease is an indication that we have huge amounts of resistance and huge amounts of addictions to go through that we have up to that point in time been unwilling to go through. And we need to be willing to go through it if we're ever going to have a soul-based change on the subject. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be, even if I had a headache, my first port of call wouldn't be a painkiller. My first port of call would be, okay, what emotion am I suppressing now? Like what, what, what experience out of harmony with love and truth, God's love and truth, have I had inside of myself that I am not allowing myself to feel about? that's causing this particular headache that I've got. That'd be my first, and probably once I understood this truth, my only port of call with regard to trying to solve the problem. Yeah. The majority of people don't do that. What the majority of people do instead is they've instantly looked for the physical cure. And then once they have the physical cure, they have no desire to find the emotion. And that emotion is going to stay within the soul, preventing the access to God's truth. Mm. So I find that very unfortunate. Mm. So this is something we need to understand with regard to this particular quality. Yeah. Mm. So following on from that, I suppose, is in your notes, I do not intellectually deny nor falsify my own condition to myself. Exactly. So I, I'm not there telling myself that, you know, the accident that happened today was, was caused by somebody else. I'm not there telling myself that this disease that I've got can be cured physically. I'm not there telling myself all the errors from God's perspective. I'm telling myself the truth. Everything has an emotional connection. There's a reason why I've gotten this particular thing or had this particular experience that's been painful. And it's always going to have something to do with my emotion. Always going to have something to do with it. And I will want to know what that was instead of trying to find out some intellectual solution. Mm. And, and I, it surprises me still that people who have come along to sessions for five or six years about divine truth still try to have the intellectual solution. And this is an indication of how frightened they are of their emotional experience and also how they do not yet understand this basic quality of God's truth. 
that without the emotional experience, you cannot receive God's truth, yeah. actually. And, and this is... So, so my feelings are I want to go through the experience, not avoid it. Why would you want to avoid it when the experience, the emotional experience, is the only way you're going to discover the truth? Why would you try to avoid the emotional experience if you knew that? Of course you wouldn't. Mm -mm. So, so every time that we are trying to avoid the emotional experience, we are really reminding ourselves that we as yet do not understand quality 13 of divine truth, <laughs> this quality that divine truth, God's truth, has to be felt and experienced before we'll be able to understand it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. I emotionally understand that I cannot teach the divine truth if I cannot feel it. Yes, yeah, so it makes sense that if I cannot feel divine truth personally in my soul and therefore automatically act upon it, then I'm pretty hypocritical attempting to teach it to somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm just teaching them an intellectual concept yep. because the only way they're going to learn God's truth is to go through an emotional experience that I have yet to go through. <laughs> so, so any person who attempts to teach another person God's truth while at the same time denying their own personal emotional experience, is basically a hypocrite. Yeah. They do not yet understand the importance of the emotional experience. And divine truth is all about the emotional experience. So, so yes, it's impossible, really, to teach another person something that you yourself have yet to personally experience. Mm. You might be able to say to them things like, well, I've been told, blah, 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 you know, but I've yet to experience it. But I think that the reason why I'm yet to experience it is because I can feel this emotion inside of me of error that's telling me to do the other thing. Yep. You know, we could maybe say things like that, but we can't be dogmatic about what is God's truth uh, or, or firm about what is God's truth without having gone through the emotional experience ourselves. And if we are, then I would suggest to the person that, that their dogmatism or their firmness is not based around love or the, their personal experience, but based around some other kind of fear that they have. Yeah, yeah. And related to that, I emotionally understand that I cannot assist another with truth if I am yet to feel it myself. Yes. So how can you help another person understand the truth about themselves when you're yet to go through the emotional experience understanding the truth about yourself? And I see this happening constantly with people. There are a lot of people engaging mediumship, for example, who do this. Mm -hmm. They are telling other people what they believe is truth or what the spirit believes is truth when the person who's the medium have yet to go, has yet to gone through the experience. Mm -hmm. Now, it's highly unlikely, if that's the case, that the person who's the medium is actually saying the right thing to the person who's yet to go through the experience as well. The medium first needs to go through the emotional experience themselves and now they're open to the truth. And, and in being open to the truth, they're then going to attract spirits who are also open to the same truth, that divine truth has to be felt. And, and they won't be focused on telling the person something about their life that's completely a furphy or something that misleads them. They'll be more honest and truthful about what's really going on for the individual. Mm. It's impossible to assist somebody else when you've yet to go through the emotional experience. So just give up doing that. <laughs> you know, like st stop believing that you can teach somebody else how to love unless you have learned how to love yourself. Stop believing that you can teach somebody else about some kind of God's truth unless you've felt that truth inside of your soul. Because if you haven't felt it inside of your soul, it's impossible to teach it. Mm. Mm. Okay. Last one, I understand that unless I feel, my understanding of the universe will be flawed. Exactly. This is one of the uh, infinite things that we need to understand about emotion. Emotions are such that they can grow infinitely. So in other words, our soul has been made by God to receive God's love, which is an emotion, and this love that we receive from God transforms our soul into its, in its capacity to receive more truth. In other words, without love and emotion, we don't have the capacity to expand and therefore receive more and more of God's truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if we really understood that, we would see that there was going to be a limit to our intellectual understanding of the universe. 
if we don't engage emotionally. We are going to understand certain things and be fascinated by certain things, but in the end there will be a ceiling beyond which we will never be able to go unless we go through some kind of emotional experiences. God has made it that way, that there are certain parts of the universe and certain parts of your own self that you cannot understand at all with your intellect and you must go through a personal emotional experience to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, humankind does that pretty naturally from birth, but unfortunately by the time a child is seven years of age, generally that's been heavily suppressed, that mm -hmm. experiential process. And that's our problem, is that because we've now suppressed it, and we believe the intellect should dominate, we have now prevented our universal and infinite expansion of our own soul. Mm. And that is a sad fact, unfortunately. So there are many people who are very intellectually clever and intellectually aware that have very little emotional experiences of God's truth and they will remain in such a condition until they allow themselves to start going through the emotional experience. And when they do, their capacity to understand even intellectually will grow mm. beyond that point mm. because the soul engages the process far differently to the intellect. And as a result, it creates opening pathways inside of the soul that allows us to absorb more of God's truths because we now have absorbed enough love to understand them. In other words, we've come to be in harmony more and more with the universe around us because we've come to be more loving. And as a result, we've come to understand more of God's truth than we understood before. And in fact, if you don't transform with regard to love, you will not understand. There's certain things that it's impossible to understand, in fact. And, and it doesn't matter how much you exercise your intellect, you will not understand them. It's only when you engage this emotion of love that you will actually be able to understand them. So if we look at that particular quality, you can see, again, it's a pretty important quality to understand from an emotional perspective to, to understand how to determine truth. And, and perhaps if we sort of give some, uh, some examples there again, every single time something rebels against us emotionally, in other words, we feel like that's not right, that's not just, that's not loving, Mm -hmm. then it's highly likely that we need to examine it, right, under those circumstances. Now, it could be that our sense of justice is skewed, yep. that our sense of love is skewed. So that's the very first place we need to call if we feel that, those emotions. Mm -hmm. And then if we're not connected to God on those particular subjects, it's highly likely we'll find out that our sense of love is skewed or our sense of justice is skewed. But once we've gone and actually maintain a connection with God, with God's love, we'll be able to determine quite rapidly what the truth will be on any given subject. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah, obviously, um, sometimes even some of our sense of justice and logic is very skewed, isn't it? Even someone saying the truth to another person often people feel that that's not loving and yes. they, they have an internal rebellion. Exactly. And this is where you're saying we need to analyse really what's going on for us emotionally before we assess. Exactly. Yeah. So if we logically assess it, we go, okay, all the person was doing was telling me what they believe is the truth. And if the person, the feeling, the, we've got to analyse the feeling. Were they trying to do that because they're trying to attack us yeah. or trying to pull us down? Or they, were they, uh, what's their history? What's their history been? Have they always been loving, you know, the way they delivered it? Were they yelling and screaming when they delivered it? You know, or were they being condescending or, or you know, were they being arrogant when they were delivering it? Were they being condescending towards us? Were they trying to ridicule us and make us feel bad? Well, no. Then all he did or she did was try to tell us the truth. If I feel bad about the reception of it, so let's say it was a husband and a wife and, and the wife goes up to the husband and says, look, do I look fat in these jeans? And the husband goes, yeah, you've looked pretty fat in those jeans. And in fact, you've been looking pretty fat lately, actually. <laughs> you know, like, and if he delivered it in that way with love and care for her, then if she gets all upset about it, then she's got to first go into, well, what's my, why have I gotten so upset? Yeah. And... Uh, 
most of the time, uh, our worth is tagged into our body weight, it seems, sometimes. Yeah. And as a result, we have to work through why that has happened, yes. what, 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 what particular thing has happened to cause that emotional experience. And we have to understand that that would have to be an error from God's perspective. So, so there's ways that we can determine what is true and what isn't true by asking ourselves those particular things. But, but if a person comes to us and they're yelling and screaming and abusing us and you know, ridiculing us and trying to pull us down and attack us and we feel all of that, then it's highly unlikely that we need to even listen to what they've got to say yeah. from God's perspective because they're not in a place where they can tell us any truth. They're not in a place where they can show us any truth. You know, these are emotions that they're going through that are out of harmony with love and out of harmony with you know, God's universal laws of love. And as such, we can dismiss the fact that we need to actually listen to those particular people mm -hmm. <laughs> right, in that moment. Mind you, there are times when people, people get upset and angry when they actually have a point. So if we were truly loving to ourselves, we would ask ourselves, do they have a point? And we would look, work through that issue personally. Yeah. But we wouldn't uh, respond with you know, rage ourselves because every time we respond with rage ourselves, it's an indication there's an emotional error inside of us that we need to, to look at. So look at it. Allow yourself to go through the rage, not directed at the other person. Go home, feel the rage, feel the experience. Get to the fear and the grief that is underneath that you're trying to deny, mm -hmm. emotionally trying to deny. Go that direction because yeah. that's the only way to solve these particular problems. It's the only way to find out or bring yourself into more harmony with God's laws. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>